The game is changing a lot this season, and it's time for us to make some changes as well, being controller players. The easiest mistake most controllers players make that limit their overall performance is not playing on optimal settings. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned player, optimizing your controller settings can greatly improve your aim, movement, and overall gameplay in Apex Legends. So I'm gonna show you what you need to do in order to maximize aim assist, movement, and minimize your recoil. So make sure you stick around to the end because I will have you 1v3 like this. This will end up being the only controller settings guide you will need for season 18. Everything in this video is tested and used by me as well, as confirmed and backed by many notable Apex Legends professionals and content creators. So let's dive right into it. First, let's talk about your general settings. These are a must look at because we do not like extra visual clutter and we want to enhance quality of life. Apex Legends can get pretty chaotic at times, and this is where we can minimize much of this and have cleaner gameplay so we can see what we are shooting and facing. For interact prompt style, you want to put it on compact because the default setting shows a little too much and we don't need any extra unnecessary visual clutter. Button hints are very optional if you know what each button does, then you don't need it. Playing with them without them actually makes your heads up display look pretty much like a little bit more cleaner, so it's up to you if you want to play with this or not. I play with it on, but I don't really need to to be honest. Crosshair damage feedback. I choose not to use them because I don't like to play with any unnecessary visual clutter. This can potentially be better like if you like to have, you know, nades and then look away or, you know, you'll see a hit marker if you see them. It is kind of optional, but I choose not to play with it because I just use the damage numbers as my hit markers. So damage numbers. I choose stacking because the other two either show nothing or show too much. So stacking gives you the perfect amount of info and adds the damage done within a few recent outputs of damage, whether it's grenades, bullets, abilities, etc. Now if you put it on like floating or you put it on none, none is, is going to give you nothing. Floating just gives you all the numbers but it doesn't add them up for you so like you just hit 13 however many times you think in a situation you're not going to add that instantly. That might be too much and it adds a little visual clutter as well as putting it on both. You don't need to see each bullet you know going by, you just need to have them stack up so you could give the call to your teammates or just you'll know how much damage you did at a, as a whole. Ping capacity, your choice, doesn't really matter to add too much visual clutter, this doesn't, it's all you like, you can do whatever you want here. Obituaries on, you want to see the player's kills and deaths show up because it's good information. Minimap rotation on, I like the minimap to turn the way I'm facing because it makes it easier to reference where pings and teammates are. Otherwise, it kind of feel like you're in a maze sometimes if you're like in a building or something like that or you're in like a tunnel, it can feel a little weird. Weapon auto cycle on empty on, it can help you if you're on a bullets and you kind of don't notice. This can not happen sometimes, especially if you're using a, a gun like the car that switches ammo, you know, so you might want to have this on just to automatically switch weapons and it's just instant reaction. Auto sprint. This is a super important setting and people often have the misconception that it makes you automatically run at all times, which is simply not true. You simply don't have to push your left stick in as extended hours of gameplay can make this very annoying. And you do a lot of sprints in the Apex, to be honest, from running around the map trying to find the last player, whether you're playing ranked or pubs. You know, you can still also slow walk on this too, which you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison. You just don't have to click in the left stick, which is the best part about it. Double tap sprint off, not necessarily controller. It's kind of, it gets a little confusing. Like you don't want to be double tapping and holding it and it just adds unnecessary stuff. You just have on auto sprint and you're going to be good. Jetpack control, put that on hold. This feels the most consistent because you either hold it to activate or let it go to deactivate instead of having to press it on activ activation and pressing it again to deactivate. Making it just, you know, one, one press and hold instead of doing multiple presses. Incoming damage feedback. I put mine on 2D, but I've also played with it on 3D. But the biggest thing you don't want to do is put it on both because that can be way too much. And actually, sometimes those arrows on 3D will literally cover your reticle and you won't see a, a damn thing. It's, you don't want that, all right? So make sure you do not put it on both. You can choose 2D or 3D. Yeah, you just make sure you choose only one of them. Taking damage closes death box is exactly as it says. And you don't want to miss on another like an armor swap or something like that due to a bullet hitting you and automatically closing the death box menu. The only thing that you could say that you probably wouldn't like about it is that you have to be way more disciplined and aware of your surroundings because it's not going to instantly put you out of it. So at the moment you hear something, the moment you see a bullet shot at you, you have to instantly close the box, run away, or make sure you get the armor swap. You don't want to miss that. Hop up, pop up on so you can see the hop ups. That's just pretty simple. And then um, from streamer mode to communication filter, that's all your personal preference. That doesn't really matter too much. Reticle and laser. I see a lot of people have so many different type of placebo pins on this, but I keep mine on default because I'm used to having the classic red dot. I've played, you know, other shooters like Call of Duty and stuff, where it's just a classic red dot and it seems like you're able to see everything with it. But if you do want to try another one, 
I recommend using a nice violet because it doesn't blend with any covers or that many skins in the game or use another color that you find is not all over the map. So like something like a green, I definitely don't recommend it because say you're looking like on Olympus, you literally won't see a reticle if you're looking at like somebody that's on grass or something. So you don't want to do that. And then the, as well, everything in accessibility is also personal preference. So, but I do recommend copying mine. Just keep it simple. Now we get into what most of you guys are waiting for. I know some of you probably skipped the, the first part of the video, which is okay. But this, this is where you want to get these amazing controller settings that actually assisted me greatly in becoming a pro Apex player within under a year. Now, if you guys do not know me, I actually come from a strictly controller game, Gears of War, where I was a multi-time esports champion MVP. So basically, I have a lot of controller experience. You can take my absolute word for everything you're about to learn. So stick layout, I put that on default. I'm used to playing a natural way, so you feel free to put it on whatever you want to. Um, I know some people might play Legacy or you know whatever whatever other options there are, but default, you know, just simple left stick movement, right stick is your, your camera, and you know, keep it simple. Interact slash reload button. I recommend tap to use and reload. Hold to reload feels a little unnatural. And also there's some times where you'll have like little bugs where you'll be playing your teammates knock down shit or something like that. And if we try to reload, you end up resing them. So you don't want to have those type of little problems on doorways, resing a teammate. Cause you know, sometimes you're going to be surrounded by multiple things that take the same input and it's going to prioritize something that you don't want to prioritize in those moments. Crouch button, I put mine on hold. I know most first person shooter games naturally are on toggle like COD, but Apex has like a more unique movement system where hold is truly the way to go if you play claw. All right, that's what something that most people really don't tell you is that that's mainly only good if you play claw. If not, play toggle because I know it's gonna be very hard to be trying to abuse the, the hold movement and aim at the same time if you're not on claw. So it's fine, it's not gonna change too much. I also do feel like playing a hold can make you have like less dead slides but that could just be totally speculation. Put survival slot button on and then trigger dead zones. You can have that on none or default. I actually feel like this is more dependent on what controller you use because I use both. I actually play a PS5 controller on Apex and I play on the Xbox controller on uh, Gears of War. But I feel like the PlayStation controller, I've tried both though on this game. The PlayStation controller is actually better with the default trigger dead zones because these triggers seem to be like super sensitive and I find myself accidentally firing at odd times, which is, you don't want that, you know? And in the Xbox controller, you can put that on none because those triggers aren't as sensitive. So I'm playing it on none. And I also like how those triggers are like shaped as well, if you guys know what I mean. And it's like those react to playing on none much better than I would say the P PS5, or PS4 would as well. Menu cursor speed. This is a setting you're gonna want to really stick with. You don't want to really change this too much because you'll mess up your armor swaps and stuff like that. And I have mine lined up like right under the second tick of trigger dead zones. If you can't see that, I'm pretty sure you can. Make sure you stick with this setting. You know what I mean? You want to be able to get armor swaps super clean and easy because that is actually a skill gap in this game. Now we get to the amazing movement aim category. All right, these settings right here are exactly what optimizes your aim assist, your movement. Minimizes your recoil, all right? The other things were more quality of life, more so, um, you know, to make sure your screen doesn't have too much visual clutter on it. But this is where you get into the real nice sensitivities, all right? So choosing your perfect sense is actually fairly easy. Most people try to give you one AOC, one sense, and think it's like a one size fits all. And that's just not how muscle memory works. Like, you know, let's be realistic, okay? For starts, Forward look sensitivity is actually the most used across all response curves. It provides the best balance of screen turning ability and aim. You will hit fire like a legend playing on four, but if you lower it to three, it might be too slow. It'd be hard to track somebody that's like strafing very, very close to you. And up to the top five can be like too fast for many, but this is also dependent on what response curve you're gonna play on. So here's a list of pros and cons for linear versus classic, which are the best two options by far. And after this list, I'll tell you the best combination of sensitivity and response curve. Linear Pros has an insanely good response, very easy for recoil control, mid-range accuracy, tracking ability, it's the best option for movement. You don't really feel too uh, like robotic, you know? It's very responsive, like I said. So you can react to everything precisely, like very quick, regardless of what sense you're playing on. I feel like you could play on this from three to five. Five might actually feel a little bit too fast. So I would say mainly three to four is the range you want to uh, stay on for look sensitivity as well as aim. The linear cons, it seems like the absolute like point blank range where you're pretty much grail stuff with somebody could be a little bit difficult at times if you're like jumping around and stuff. 
but long range takes a nice amount of practice but you can try my profit settings to counter that and apparently you'll become a what they call a buzz light year because the majority of pros play on it which also does mean it's good so do not be scared of it it's just a funny meme that people say because so many people play on it and they love the sense and the people are actually trying to get it nerfed so that's a good sign anytime somebody's trying to get something to nerf it's my you might as well play on it let's be real <laughs> So here's the classic pros and cons, all right? Classic, from my experience, is extremely good and that point blank range, unlike linear, it feels like the aim assist just absolutely just drags to straight headshots. But the only thing is that it's more robotic, right? So that's on the more con side. But back to the pros, long range isn't too hard depending on what weapon you're using, like flat lines, a Devo, stuff like that might be, might be harder to control at, at distance. But you could still like get those like hard, like easy beams in, all right? Another thing that I do like that is good about Classic it is very, very good for the beginner and intermediate level players that don't play the game an insane amount of hours to get the hang on, all right? So what I would recommend sense-wise is four or five, not three because you're already taking a hit playing on like the more not responsive response curve. So you don't want to go too low, all right? So I would say four or five for sure when playing on Classic. So more cons about playing on Classic is that pretty much playing with no dead zone is kind of the only option to really beam on it and still have pre uh, precise control you don't want to really play on a dead zone on the classic because you'll feel like you can't make those like those very tiny adjustments those micro adjustments you might need to make because the dead zone is going to stop it as well as it not being as responsive is going to hold it back from happening as well also recoil control will take a little bit longer to grasp on because of you know it being less responsive so you'll probably have to raise your optic sense in order to make it easier now I do have a nice little bonus tip for you guys that I have not mentioned yet. And it is a way to actually be able to play on things like 4 3.5 or 3.54, right? And this is so, this is such a secret. Most people don't really talk about it too much, but it is actually, I think the devs left it in on purpose. And what you do pretty much is you keep your sense the same, right? So, so let's say you play on 4 3, right? And you want to play on 4 3.5 instead but you don't have to play on alcs for this but you do have to go to the alc settings which is it sounds so weird right so you go to alcs right and then you go to the alcs per optic settings and you adjust your per optics whether the 1x 2x 3x whatever you want to adjust and you make sure you multiply it and so you can see what your final will be so if you do like one and you do 3.5 obviously 3.5 right so you can do that you put it on 4 1 and then you put your 1x on 3.5. So now you're playing on 4 3.5. You get what I'm saying? So you have to make sure you keep that on. Do not turn it off. Just press on for put on per optics, press back, and then make sure you turn off your ALC settings. And it actually keeps the per optics settings in play. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice little bonus tip if you want to really customize your uh, settings and still play on the 4 3 settings because I, I definitely believe the default settings that uh, is way better than ALCs because. It has a different type of registration for the aim assist. So here we go. The absolute perfect best combination I would say for the play on is actually going to be 4-3 linear. Um, you get to have the most type of like mobility with this as well as recoil control and playing with no dead zones is even like the, the furthest way to like it's the best way to go because it feels like your aim assist is constantly activating even if you have a little bit of stick drift that actually makes it where your aim assist always is activated because your little stick drift is constantly just dragging on to people it gives you that rotational aim assist people would call it the only thing i see people to turn away from linear no dead zone on is because they have a lot of stick drift and at that point you can actually try small dead zone but if that doesn't work for you, you might have to just play classic, okay? If you have still have too much stick drift or playing on small dead zone, it actually might be time to get a new controller. But if that doesn't work, if you can't get one, play on classic. Classic small dead zone would be the last choice, but you don't want to really play if you don't if you're not comfortable with playing with stick drift, it's fine. You can you can play 4-3, 4-4 classic and be okay. So if you don't want to play linear at all, if you don't like how that raw input feels, if you're more beginner intermediate, which is perfectly fine. You want to play on classic i will say 4344 is the way to go that was the older meta for sensitivities and it's very very easy to get used to and you actually being crazy in that mid-range close range so you guys could definitely get comfortable with that and last thing i would like to tell you guys before we end the video is no matter what sensitivity you choose 
you will need to practice, all right? On average, getting completely used to a new sensitivity will take like about a week and a half until you're completely comfortable and it's just you sign in, no warm up, and you're just like, okay, I already know what, I'm, what it's gonna feel like. It becomes your natural feel for the game. So you have to grind through that and then let the rewards come to you, all right? So that makes it to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something new, and make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe. I would love to see your recommendations of more videos, tips you like to see from me. Without further ado, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.